Hello everyone, this is Doc Almighty and welcome to tutorial number five of Immersive Engineering where we're continuing our look at power generation and today we'll be looking at the thermoelectric generator. Now there's a, not a lot to this so this will be a pretty short video but I wanted to make sure that uh, you got a good look at it. I think a lot of people gloss over this block and there's quite a bit that you can do with it and it's pretty cool. So let's take a quick look at how we make it and to do that we need three steel ingots, one copper wire coil, and five constantin plates, like so. Gives you one thermoelectric generator. To make a constantin plate you need a constantin ingot and an engineer's hammer, like so. Gives you a constantin plate. When you do make it, you retain your engineer's hammer so it's not consumed but it does take wear and, and tear. And to create an, a constantin ingot, you need to smelt constantin grit, and that's created with nickel grit and copper grit, like so. Uh, gives you two constantin grit. You can, if you're using a mod pack that has uh, other tech mods that have dust or powder forms of ores, you can substitute the equivalents um, from the ore dictionaries of those to create constantin grit, so that's all good. All right, when you make your thermoelectric generator, it looks much like this. And generally speaking, people will throw it in the ground, and the way it works is that it takes the, uh, the thermal difference between a hot block like lava and a cold block like water. It takes that temperature difference and creates power out of that in the form of RF. So what I've taken the liberty of doing is setting up a bunch of thermoelectric generators with different combinations of blocks. Uh, I have saw a post on Reddit that has uh, the numbers for all of these combinations and the results I got, as you can see, I've, I measured the current coming out of, of each of these thermoelectric generators. The numbers I got were one less than what I saw in that uh, in that post on Reddit. So, and I'm, I'm happy to, to link that uh, post in the video description, uh, but I got one RF per tick less. Now, I don't know if that's due to a change in the mod since that post was created, uh, or if it has something to do with the fact that I'm using this current transformer. Uh, I don't know if there's any accuracy issues with it, uh, but I wanted to give that disclaimer. But the numbers that I got, for lava and water was 14 RF per tick. With ice and lava, I got 15 RF per tick. With eulorium and lava, I got 12 RF per tick. The eulorium, if you're not familiar with it, is a block from big reactors, so you won't find this naturally in Minecraft or if you're just using immersive engineering. Uh, but if you're using any of the uh, larger mod packs, uh, big reactors is probably going to be in there, and that's where eulorium comes from. The same with plutonium, it also comes from big reactors. So when you, we use lava and plutonium, we get 24 RF per tick. Using gelid cryothium and lava, we get 16 RF per tick. I believe gelid cryothium is from thermal expansion, but I'm not. Don't hold me to that. Um, but it is a, a, a block from uh, another mod, also not native to immersive engineering. Likewise with blazing pyrothium, that also comes from another mod, uh, which I think is also thermal expansion. So water and blazing pyrothium gives you 29 RF per tick. Packed ice and blazing pyrothium also gives you 29 RF per tick. So in this case, it doesn't matter if you use ice or water, you get the same power output. And if you use eulorium and blazing pyrothium, you get 21 RF per tick. Now you'll notice we just saw some fire there. Uh, and you notice I have these glass blocks all over here. This is that's exactly why this blazing pyrothium is pretty volatile and it's a lot more aggressive than lava. Uh, and if you don't have uh, anything on the blocks at the same level as the uh, blazing pyrothium, things will just spontaneously combust and catches on fire. And uh, if your block's flammable, it will burn it up. So that's why we see all these glass blocks here. All right. So continuing on uh, with blazing pyrothium and plutonium, you'll notice zero RF per tick. And that is because these are both hot blocks 
and they are the same temperature. You can use two hot blocks and still generate power as long as there's some temperature difference, differential between the two of them. But in this case, it would be pointless. There's no RF protect to be gained from that. So with gelid cryothium and blazing pyrothium, that creates 30 RF per tick. And that's about as much RF as you're going to get out of one hot and one cold block. I'll show you in a minute how to squeeze the maximum amount of RF uh, per tick out of one thermoelectric generator. Uh, but in this configuration where you have one hot and one cold, that's about as much as you're going to get. All right, so with water and eulorium, you get about 19 RF per tick. And with packed ice and eulorium, you get about 20 RF per tick. With gelid cryothium and eulorium, it's 21. Water, ice, and plutonium is 29. Gelid cryothium and plutonium is 30 RF per tick, the same as gelid cryothium or, and used with blazing pyrothium. Since they're the same temperature, you get the same RF per tick out of them. So that's the optimal two blocks to use is either blazing pyrothium or plutonium with gelid cryothium. All right, so you notice in all of these, we have one hot and one cold block, but you'll notice that a thermoelectric generator also has two other sides. So this using two hot blocks and two cold blocks, this is the way to get the most RF per tick out of one thermoelectric generator. So in this case, we're using ice and plutonium, and rather than just getting 29 RF per tick, we actually get 59 RF per tick in this configuration. Now, what to do if you have an array of thermoelectric generators? Well, as it happens, we have one right here. All, it, all you gotta do is use a checkerboard pattern. Take the one thermoelectric generator, like we saw over there, and replicate that and you just invert it for each one that's it's just like creating a checkerboard so, or, uh, so you know when you do it this way they all fit nice and tidy in a big checkerboard pattern and in this case where we have 13 uh, thermoelectric generators they each create 59 RF, 59 RF per tick and even I measured it with this current transformer it does indeed give us 767 RF per tick from this little array. So pretty cool. Now if you're using stock immersive engineering and nothing else, uh, this is pretty much all you can do uh, to configure your thermoelectric generators like this. If you have a bunch of them, you can either uh, create layers of these where there's one space apart because of this uh, wire connector or if you're using a mod pack that has, mod, mod pack that has uh, other power conduits besides these wire connectors, you can create something like this, which is a pseudo, by that I mean fake, uh, reactor made of stacks of thermoelectric generators with uh, a source block for each uh, thermoelectric generator because moving or flowing liquids do not have any impact on thermoelectric generators but you can create a what looks like a reactor out of these thermoelectric generators now there are some limitations I don't think you can do this particular configuration in native immersive engineering because if you're using wire connectors they have to be on the top or the bottom um, or at least they have to be on a side that is not covered by hot or cold blocks uh, and you, so you couldn't do it in this manner. Uh, if you look up at the top here, I've got columns of Ender IO conduit going down. Uh, it would be cool if wire connectors could all be in the same block space, but they can't. You could you could create a row down uh, one side of these and use the wire connectors, but I don't think you'd be able to get uh, all of them. I didn't try it, so I don't know that for a fact. If anyone uh, does do it, and uh, uh, please leave a note in the comments. I'd love to hear all about it. Uh, there may I'm not sure you can get every thermoelectric generator powered like that, and it certainly won't be as tidy as this. But hey, if it works, that'd be cool too. Um, now in this configuration, you know I've got all, every thermoelectric generator. Uh, connected to power and that left me some blocks in the middle so I went ahead and put a few more hot and cold blocks to squeeze out just a little bit more RF per tick in this configuration so really quickly we're gonna take a look 
Uh, and if you haven't uh, seen how immersive engineering interacts with other mods, you can take these wire connectors and just pop them on anything that connects to RF Partic, and they'll generally connect up very, very seamlessly. So I can take this and uh, hook it up to here. I could also use an engineer's hammer and just uh, change this from output to input and not have to do this, but I wanted to show you how these wire connectors will connect to anything. So we hook these up. And now because uh, there's a lot of RF per tick here, I couldn't use a current transformer to measure the current. So what I'm using is a block from Ender IO called the power monitor. And as you can see here, this says we're getting an average input of about 4,000 RF per tick. Um, my other test runs on this, it was more like 3,300. So I'm not quite sure why we're getting so much out of that. I don't believe that's, well, it's close enough. Bottom line is there's a pretty, pretty good chunk of RF uh, coming out of this thermoelectric generator. But the really interesting thing is, so if you put up a, a, gener or a reactor from big reactors that's about this size, you're going to get uh, some considerable power out of it, but you got to keep feeding it uh, eulorium ingots uh, or one of the other fuel sources uh, that you can use with big reactors. But this thing is cranking out three to 4,000 RF per tick, what well, says one now because our capacitor is full so there's no more uh, current going through but this thing cranks out three thousand three to four thousand RF per tick and you net there's no fuel being consumed this is free power so that's a that is a pretty pretty cool deal uh, I haven't used something like this in any of the worlds I've played but I'm certainly going to consider it now because that is pretty cool now I will say this thing is not my idea I saw a reddit post with a, a, a they call it a thermoelectric reactor I believe uh, doesn't quite look like this a little bit different but it was the inspiration for this I will post a link to that reddit post uh, in the video description out of respect for the original author because like I said this was not uh, not my idea and I really really like it so I'll uh, I'll hook him up uh, give him props for we're coming up with this uh, similar design and uh, that's it so if you guys uh, learned anything you liked the video uh, please take the time to leave a like uh, it always helps if you didn't uh, I'm always open to constructive feedback uh, and if you'd like to see more videos uh, from me please consider subscribing as always until next time go forth and be awesome